you were looking at footage recently released from a court of the January 6th insurrection at Capitol Hill. And I use air quotes for that because even though it's been more than six months, not a single person who's been accused or detained has been charged with insurrection. It really wasn't insurrection. The only charges, or at least pleas that I've seen so far, were for illegal parading. Uh, I've heard it called the great meandering. Now, I'm not downplaying it. I don't think you should go into closed buildings. I don't think you should break windows, although now we're learning that uh, the FBI had informants in there and they were leading the whole procession. I think a lot more facts are going to come out. But my point is, since January 6th, we have been told that violence is the worst thing, especially if it's Republican violence, even if there really wasn't much violence on that day. And by the way, I agree, violence is a bad thing in case you're in any doubt where I stand. But contrast that and the extreme coverage of the great meandering of the Capitol with headlines like this. Should the climate movement embrace sabotage? That's in nothing less than the New Yorker, an obsessively anti-Republican, anti-January 6th publication. And then promoting a book called How to Blow Up a Pipeline by Andrea's mom. How can the leftist Democrat eco-movement embrace violence Moments after denouncing the great meandering here to help us figure it out is our friend Mark Morano, the boss of ClimateDepot.com. I'm not trying to be cheeky. I'm just pointing out how absurd and hyper-heated the rhetoric was about January 6th, with, which in the end, prosecutors obviously don't think it was an insurrection. They haven't filed any Insurrection Act charges. But um, the debate about eco-terrorism is being normalized. How do you square that, Mark? Uh, there's no way to square it. I mean, if you think about what happened on January 6th, where the, the public house of the people, the U.S. Congress, took a little damage and people broke in. But at the same time, a year earlier, with the with, oh, well, yeah, almost a year earlier, the, the Black Lives Matter marches literally destroyed storefronts and private businesses and homes and killed people and leveled parts of cities in the United States. And that was cheered on. That was cheered on so much they lifted all COVID restrictions. So it's a very simple way to square this, Ezra, and we know this, whether it's you're talking about mask mandates or any kind of lockdown rules. If, this, if the activity you're doing is was in favor of the political party in power or the ruling elite, elite then it's going to be okay. The, nine, the, the, um, the January 6th riot, or whatever you want to call it, the meandering, uh, was literally not okay because it was a pro-Trump rally. Black Lives Matter was perfectly fine with the same people outraged because it was for a good political cause in their mind and bringing us to what the New Yorker is doing now, promoting, featuring and, uh, you know, essentially rubber stamping eco-terrorism. That's also for a good cause that the ruling elite likes. So it just you can do violence, but it has to be violence for the right cause or they're not going to support you. You're going to be the evil and vilified. Yeah, I mean, here in Canada, it's quite something. The Proud Boys uh, is literally listed as a terrorist group. I don't think there's been a single incident of Proud Boys doing anything in Canada. They used to meet in bars, but it was just a, a way for the prime minister to demonize right-wing young guys. Um, I, mean, they, I mean, it's absurd. Proud Boys doesn't even operate in Canada. Um, it's literally a terrorist group. But the prime minister won't lift a finger to not only the, the kind of uh, protests you're referring to, Black Lives Matter, we've seen some of that in Canada, but in Canada about a year and a half ago, there were widespread um, blockades on railway tracks that could theoretically de derail a train if they weren't caught in time. Railway blockades, pipeline blockades, forestry blockades, none of that is called terrorism, even when people are physically assaulted. But um, I don't know, the great meandering and a couple of Proud Boys drinking beers, that's illegal. I, I think it shows that, uh, that police themselves are becoming politicized because it's not just politicians who do this stuff. Once these things are in you know, the rules or the laws, they're, they're implemented in a political way. I think the police are becoming more and more political. 
I mean, I agree. I'm now, I, I get flat from some of my own followers. I, I start to openly question whether defunding the police when they're uh, heavy handed tactics, what we're seeing in Australia or Canada or parts of the US where they're shutting down people either without a mask or violating lockdown rules. Uh, I don't want to see our police uh, following these orders. In fact, I'm actually cheering on Black Lives Matter right now in New York City, Ezra. They're actually standing up for some of the uh, uh, African-American patrons who are being ejected from restaurants. That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a monologue on the news of the day, then I interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. You gotta subscribe. Go to rebelnews.com.